Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Godox S30 Daylight LED. My channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence from any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So, if you end up interested in any of the products discussed in this video, please use the links in the description below. Now, on the surface, there isn't a ton to talk about with the Godox S30, other than it being their first focusable LED. So if you guys are familiar with a product by Kame TV called the Boltzen series, they have some focusable LEDs. Focusable LEDs are really popular for filmmakers, videographers, etc., because it gives you a moderate level of control to be able to control the width of the pattern of light. So we're gonna plug this in off of its included AC adapter. Now there are some other power alternatives. You can use a Sony NPF style battery. There's an adapter for that. And you can also use like a USB power bank. There's an adapter for that as well. However, to get the full 30 watts out of it, you have to use the AC adapter. The back is extremely simple. You've got a power button and then you've got one large knob, which is for focusing the LED. On the side of the unit, you've got a display, which shows you both the power percentage as well as the color temperature. Don't know why the color temperature is relevant since it's all daylight. It's only one color temperature it can be. And then you've got a power control right here on the side. So really simple. And I just wanna say I really like this yoke design that it has on it because it's very sturdy, it's very compact. You can also like rotate the light downward or completely back like this. So you've got a really good level of control with this yoke and it holds the light and supports it really well. Now, honestly, my video covering all the capabilities of this could stop right there if we were just talking about the Godox S30. However, the real pull to this system is actually all of this stuff. So what you see on the table right in front of me is all of the accessories that are gonna be available at launch of the S30 product. And really uh, going through the manual, there's actually already more in the pipeline for this, but let's talk about what's going to be available for it right from the jump. And before you guys ask, I have no details on pricing for this yet. So I will update that in the future. Whenever there's links to these products, I will include them in the description. But right now this is a sample unit, so there could be changes and I don't know the pricing. The barn doors, this I think is included automatically with the S30, just if you wanna flag off the light. So that's a pretty standard modifier that you would expect with an LED, but everything else on here is an optional accessory. So the central piece to all of this stuff here is this. This is what's called a projection snoot. You may have seen this before called an optical snoot. It's something that focuses the LED light into a tight pattern actually using optics. So what you see right here is a lens and on the front it says 85 millimeter 2.8. No, you can't use this lens for anything else, but it does allow you to kind of shape and control the light coming from the S30 LED. So it's very simple. This projection snoot just slides right on the front and then it locks down with this little switch right here. And now it's on. And this explains why the yoke is beefier than the LED really needs is because it's actually designed to support all of this. You will notice, maybe it was just mine, but right out of the box, mine was kind of tilting a little bit, but they include an Allen wrench handle for this just so that you can easily kind of jump in here and tighten this down or loosen it as you change the optics on here because obviously you don't need it really tight if you're just using the LED, but as soon as you put this on here, more leverage, you're gonna need more tightness on that nut in order to hold this thing in place. Now the 85 millimeter here is the default lens but there's also swappable optics for it that can allow you to get wider or more narrow patterns of light. This 85 is the only one that uses this little adapter in here. So we're gonna take all that out and we'll switch to the longest lens that's available, which is a 150 millimeter F2.2, which wouldn't be a bad portrait lens if you could focus with it. So you can see with this little knob right here on the side, we can tighten the lens down into place so that it doesn't go anywhere, but it also is what allows us to zoom it forward and backward, which will affect our quality of light. By moving this forward and backward, you're essentially focusing the lens and that's going to determine how sharp 
the light falls off from light to dark. So if we've got it defocused a lot, it's gonna transition really smoothly, but if we've got it perfectly in focus, we're gonna have a very sharp edge. The third lens that's going to be available is this 63 millimeter f2.4. The 63 millimeter is going to be the widest angle option, so it's going to give you the widest pattern of light. But wait, there's more. Each of these pieces is going to affect the LED in a different way. First, we have the iris control, which is essentially just aperture blades. The projection kit has a little area for you to sandwich pieces on the inside of it. And this is where the SA6 is going to go for you to be able to control aperture of the lens. And essentially that allows you to narrow or widen the beam of light again. But by far, this one gives you the most significant level of control. You can take it anywhere from the widest potential of the lens all the way to a tiny, tiny dot. Now how small that dot can get is again going to depend on the optic that you've got it paired with. The longest lens is going to give you the smallest hole, whereas the widest lens will give you a wider hole. This is a mask holder, or as I more commonly like to refer to these as, is cookies. So this would be our cookie holder. Now the cookies are for creating patterns, so this can be used to give you some texture in your background. Um, just control the shape of light falling on your subject. Now, I have to be honest, I'm not exactly thrilled about the cookies that have launched with it because we've got a moon with stars, we've got stars, we've got a holy night, a sunburst, I guess. Uh, this weird shape, don't know what that is. Looks like some secret society symbol. And the one that I would actually find useful is this, just simply a slash of light, um, really flat horizontal, which is otherwise pretty difficult to achieve in lighting. But they already showed in the user manual that's coming with this that there will be more masks available. And uh, I actually might look into trying to get some of these cut myself because I think that you'd be able to do some really cool things if you were able to custom create your own patterns. It's very thin metal, so you gotta be a little bit careful with it, but I think that also makes it really easy to kind of create your own DIY solutions. Next we have these, they act as neutral density filters. So we've got some that are completely solid, and then we have some that are half and half, or even one that steps down from empty to a little bit of grade and then even more. Now I messed up the first time I tried using these, I put them in the same spot where everything else went, where the cookie went, where the iris control went. I tried shoving them in here and I think it took me about six minutes to get it out. These go directly in front of the lens of the LED. You can see it's a perfect fit and which is nice because you can also use this in conjunction with the mask or the iris control. No, you cannot use the cookie and the iris control at the same time. Now that I'm thinking about this, why didn't they just put these indentations on this iris control? We're gonna have to email about this. So that you had one piece that you were using for iris control that also offered you the ability to use your iris control with the mask. But as it stands right now with this design, uh, you cannot use the iris control and the cookies at the same time. Additionally, we have these little guys, which uh, I guess you can just call them like a flag. So with these, you can insert them in the same area with the iris control. You can also use them in conjunction with the iris control or the cookies. There's a lot here, I know guys. But with this, you can kind of put it anywhere and just give you a really sharp edge to either a clean pattern or one of these cookie patterns as well. This is simply a case. This is what all the neutral density filters came in. Also fits your mask, it also fits these. So if, if you're gonna have you know, 10, 15, 20 pieces to this, it's nice to have a really simple case to keep it all organized with. And the last thing, previously we've had to wait on gels. If, if you guys followed me for a while, you know I've complained about having high quality gels for both the H200R and the newer V1, and they finally just announced them, and they did that by partnering with a German gel manufacturer called QMAX. 
And so what that means now is I think we're gonna see more of these native kits of gels with a larger variety of colors and a better quality of color corrections. So in this color correction kit, we've got half, quarter, eighth, and full of CTO, full CTB, plus green and minus green. So basically all of the really common correction gels that you could ever need are right here in really good increments. And then for color, it's got a nice mix. We've got blues, pinks, yellows, reds, purple. So basically a big color effect gel here and it looks like there are 15 colors that come in the color effect pack. So a good amount of gels available for this right at launch, which is cool. Okay, so now you've seen that there is a ridiculous amount of things that you can do with this. So I love this whole projection kit. I love all the control that it offers you, but it's greatly limited by the 30 watt LED, which just isn't that powerful of an LED light source, maybe for videographers to be creative with, but not quite enough for photographers to really play with. There's a lot of places that I would like to see this entire set, all the effort that they put into creating this set, I would like to see that applied to a few different products. First, I'd like to see that applied to a larger, more powerful S-series LED. So if we could get this in 60 watts, 90 watts, 120 watts, that would be fantastic. Because as it stands right now, 30 watts, not quite enough, and it's not even a portable 30 watts because as soon as you go to one of the battery sources, you're only getting 10 watts out of it. So if we could get an S120 or S60 with a V-mount battery attachment so we could actually use its full power portably, then I would be way happier about this entire system. I don't know if it's possible, but I'd also love to see this applied to flash. I, I'm not quite sure, like the optic style is completely different than anything we've really seen with the flash. There's a COB LED back here through this little projection glass. I don't know what it would take to get Flash to work with that, but if they can make it happen, I would love it. You guys know Godox is really good at adapting their products for different uses and, and just bringing all these possibilities together. So I really hope they're able to do that because I think photographers would love to have a system like this. Also, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but Godox does have a new series of lighting coming out called the FV series. And the FV series is their first ever hybrid LED flash system. So I've talked about Rotolite here before and you guys have seen how I felt about that. I just didn't think it was powerful enough to do any serious work with. But the FE series from Godox is coming in a 150 and 200 watt version. So we're talking on that 200 watt version with a 400% overcharge, we're talking 800 watts of LED flash. That's actually enough to get some things done with. Maybe not outdoors, but definitely enough in a studio environment. Now, it's a completely different style head, but I hope they find a way to adapt that head to also take advantage of this projection snoot system. Then photographers would really be able to utilize this system in a significant way. I think I'm gonna do a live series just messing around with this, like, playing with it more and more because there's so many possibilities by bringing all this in. I'm gonna try to get some of these kind of custom made, maybe try and DIY my own and also see the limitations of it in a photo world where we're trying to freeze the image rather than a video world where you can get away with a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. So keep on the lookout for a future video where we're actually utilizing this a lot more, but I just wanted to introduce you guys to this, show you that it's coming and show you how it's designed as well as its capabilities. So hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, comment below with any questions, subscribe if you wanna see more, and until next time, keep on shooting YouTube.